and welcome to today's lecture on the making of a hero. I'm your professor, Dr. Rob Steffen, and today we're going to talk about what it meant to be a hero in ancient Greece. Now, Heracles might fit into a Marvel movie today, but he wouldn't be a perfect fit. And we can see from ancient Greek heroes kind of what they strived for in society and also some of the pitfalls that could come along with that. So whether you're looking to be great or simply avoid your Achilles heel, journey with me as we investigate the making of a hero. It's tough not to think about heroes in today's world, when it seems as though 9 out of every 10 blockbuster movies are based on Marvel or DC or some other comic book heroes, modern heroes are here for our taking. Just $9.95 plus popcorn and a drink. But what makes those heroes heroic? Well, in today's world, it tends to come down to one of two things. In the Marvel sense, heroes tend to be people who perform extraordinary acts of courage. Acts of courage that serve the common good. Batman wouldn't be Batman, for example, if he was trying to bring down Gotham rather than save Gotham. We often frequently use the word hero in another sense. Ordinary heroes or everyday heroes. People like policemen or firefighters or, you know, professors of classics like yours truly. These are people who perform smaller actions of service that earn admiration over time. Whether you're talking about the silver screen or the smaller stage, however, both conceptions of modern hero center on the greater good. So was this the same in ancient Greece, right? How well would these old Greek superheroes fit in in a modern superhero movie? Well, they'd certainly fit in terms of the kind of like larger than life aspect. But Greek heroes, they weren't always trying to do good in society. And so somebody like Achilles, right, undoubtedly an amazing, extraordinary warrior, even fights a god. At the same time, he lets his best friend and his compatriots die. And somebody like Heracles, right, completing 12 nearly impossible labors. But at the same time, he like kills his wife and his kids. Now, kind of interesting, uh, it looks like Marvel movies, right, these superhero movies, they're actually moving in that direction today with far more complicated protagonists playing the role of heroes. Now, when we look at the heroes of Greek antiquity, we want to be looking for five distinct traits. And these are going to be some of the things that set them apart both from ordinary people, right, on the one hand, and then also separate them from the divinities, right? The immortals, on the other hand. Let's take a look at those five traits. The first trait of a Greek hero is the one that most clearly separates them from the world of the divine. Heroes die. No matter how strong or beloved or beautiful or talented a hero might be, in the end, they still meet the same fate as the rest of us. Second, Heroes perform extraordinary, but not necessarily exemplary, deeds. Oedipus, for example, both defeats the evil Sphinx, but he also kills his poor father and marries his mother. Eesh. Third, when heroes do die, it's often the result of a premature or violent or mysterious death. There's something unique about the way they go out of this world. Take Narcissus, a hero known for his beauty, who starved himself to death after becoming transfixed with his own image in a pond. The fourth trait is that heroes are worshipped at their gravesite. The unique power that heroes have in their lifetime gives them a certain power after death as well. And people come to the tombs of heroes to have them intercede in their own lives. Finally, heroes are remembered in song and ritual after their death. 
there is perhaps no better example than Achilles, as the first lines of the Iliad read, Tell me muse of the rage of Achilles, an entire epic poem dedicated to his exploits. So death itself is one of the main characteristics of heroes in ancient Greece. And this again is another thing that kind of separates them from heroes in modern movies today. Uh, another thing is that Greek heroes, they have some sort of power in their afterlife, right? And this power derives from the extraordinary deeds they did while they were alive. Let's take a look at a lesser known Greek hero, an athlete by the name of Cleomedes, to see how these five traits play out. In the long, long ago, Cleomedes was a boxer from the gorgeous Aegean island of Astapaleia. Now Cleomedes was a renowned fighter and had never lost a match until one day he killed an opponent in the ring. The judges determined this was through foul play, which was illegal rather than by accident, which was totally fine. And as a result, they determined Cleomedes the loser. So Cleomedes comes home and he's so upset he goes into a school building and tears the entire school building down. He kills 60 kids. And while this is certainly extraordinary strength, in no way is this an exemplary deed. Don't be tearing down school buildings anytime soon. The Astapaleans start chasing Cleomedes, pelting him with stones, and he eventually finds sanctuary within the temple of Athena and hides in a chest. When the townspeople finally arrive and open the chest, he's simply gone. They journey all the way to Delphi to figure out what happened to old Cleomedes, and there the oracle responds that he is no longer mortal. Ever since, Cleomedes was worshipped as a hero in the town of Astapaleia. So Cleomedes has all the traits of a hero, right? He has extraordinary but not necessarily exemplary deeds, right? That strength in pulling down the building but also killing 60 kids. Um, he also has this kind of mysterious, mysterious death, right? Where he goes into the temple, uh, hides in this box and then vanishes. And he's worshipped after death uh, at Astapaleia and it's his commemoration through ritual and song that gives him a sort of immortality. So what were these heroic graves like? The shrines to ancient Greek heroes were known as heroa, or heroon in the singular. The sacred space was often demarcated by a wall, and the location of the dead hero was marked by a mound of dirt, known as a tumulus, or an altar, or a gravestone, or even a small house. And this area would then receive offerings from the community in exchange for the hero helping out the gift giver from beyond the grave. So this might seem really weird, but we've got all sorts of things like this today, right? The Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Monument, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Uh, in Rome today, right? Uh, people still kind of go commemorate a uh, funerary memorial to Julius Caesar. So if you walk through the forum, there's a little place where he's commemorated. Uh, people still leave flowers at that site. Perhaps even more so than the gods, heroes are very closely tied to specific stories, mainly the stories of their heroic deeds. And just like with the gods, we tend to get multiple versions of each hero's deeds. These multiple versions can occur in two different ways. With the vertical tradition, we get different accounts of the same episode in Hero. With the horizontal tradition, we get the same hero engaged in vastly different events. So an example of the vertical tradition we have with uh, Jason getting the Golden Fleece. In the most common story, uh, it's Medea who gives Jason these herbs to put the dragon to sleep. But in another story that we know mainly from art, somehow like the dragon like eat, j eats Jason and then like barfs him back up and then he gets the golden fleece somehow, we're not really sure. But the same episode, but two different versions of it. With the horizontal tradition, uh, think of somebody like Heracles, right? His amazing 12 labors, that's one set of stories. And then him going mad and killing his family, that's a whole different set of stories, right? So same hero, but different types of events.
Many heroes are known for a remarkable trait, a divine birth, or extraordinary strength, or bravery in war. Another version of hero, however, is known more for adventure than for any single trait. We might call these figures quest heroes, and their primary traits are their journey, their pursuit of an object or person, and the trials and tribulations that come along with that. The hero's journey, more broadly, has been studied in depth by a variety of scholars. But none perhaps more influential than Joseph Campbell. In Campbell's conception of the hero's journey, the journey always begins with a call to adventure, frequently with the hero denying the call at first, only to eventually accept. The hero then crosses a transformational threshold into the world of the unknown, often bypassing an imposing guardian. While in the world of the unknown, the hero is frequently aided by helpers and challenged by enemies, eventually reaching the abyss, the greatest challenge the hero must face. This could be slaying the dragon, or the sphinx, or the chimera, or the medusa. Ancient Greece has no shortage of great monsters. The hero is then transformed and reborn, and eventually must come to terms with this new version of himself or herself. And finally, returning to the world of the known, the hero recognizes their new gift, whether it's wealth, or leadership, or knowledge. So with some of Greek mythology's most famous quest heroes, right? We've got like Odysseus trying to make his way back from Troy, back home to his wife Penelope in his home on Ithaca. With Perseus, we've got him trying to slay the Medusa. With Bellerophon, we've got him trying to kill the Chimera. And with Jason, we've got him trying to retrieve the Golden Fleece. So heroes differ from gods in that heroes must die. But their extraordinary deeds in life give them power after death. But with the heroes of ancient Greece, right, no matter how many extraordinary deeds they do, we can still see that they're often very, very flawed characters, right? Sometimes having very little to do with social good uh, and just having to do with divine strength or birth or speed or skill in war. And this allows us to kind of grapple or see the Greeks grappling with the nature of the human condition, right? No matter how great you can be at something, you can still be far from perfect. Just a couple takeaway lessons you can learn from the ways of a hero.